All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about plant structures, a few different structures of most plants, and uh, see what they do for the plants and kind of how all of these structures interact together to uh, make plants what they are. So the first structure we're gonna talk about here are the roots of a plant. So we can all imagine what roots look like. All right, most of these structures that we're gonna talk about, you, you should have already heard of, and now we just need to figure out exactly what these do to service the plant and kind of provide uh, these different needs that the plant has. So the roots, and we can see down here, right, not all roots are gonna be vis visible, but we have these big tree roots down here. Uh, the, one of the main purposes of roots is to supply the plants with water and uh, other nutrients that's been that have been absorbed through the soil. So we have all this soil down here. Uh, most, most trees are gonna grow in, in similar kind of just soil like dirt. Uh, you can imagine and in that soil when when it rains all the water kind of kind of seeps down in here into the soil and when it does that we can end up with the roots absorbing some of this water through the soil so plants can get water when it rains uh, through their leaves and, and other structures but the, the roots absorb a lot of water as well so that's the kind of purpose number one of these uh, these roots here is that they supply water that has been absorbed from the soil and also they absorb other nutrients from the soil but water is the key here and the second purpose of roots and this is kind of uh, intuitive here is that they anchor support and stabilize the plant they basically kind of keep them uh, anchored in the ground you can imagine if we took this tree and kind of just eliminated all of these roots what would happen to the tree well, you can imagine it would just fall over, right? It, it needs the roots to kind of provide support. You can think of a building, right? If we were to build a really tall skyscraper, <laughs> that's a pretty bad skyscraper, but <laughs> if we were to build a tall skyscraper, what do we want to do at the bottom here? Well, you can imagine we, we want to build a really strong foundation at the bottom, probably dig pretty deep into the ground. If you've ever seen construction going on on a, on a big building, they, they dig a really deep foundation in the ground uh, and that provides support for this tall building because uh, a big structure like this needs to have strong support at the bottom. So trees are the same way and really any plant is the same way. The roots have to be really strong to kind of hold the plant and anchor it in the ground uh, so they can maintain its structure that way. Okay, so the next structure, stems. Obviously we've all seen stems of plants before. There is these kind of sturdy stick looking things most of the time. And so two things that plants do, or sorry, <laughs> two things that stems do. Stems provide structure and support for the plant's body, all right? So both the roots and the stems are gonna be providing some structure and support for the plant. The stems kind of provide the structure for the body of the plant. So if you think maybe a plant like this, maybe it has a big flower on the top or something, right? So the heavy part at the top, the flower or the tree branches or whatever type of plant it is, this needs to be supported by something, and that's what the stems, or in the case of trees, trunks, do for these plants, is they provide structure for the body of the plant. Or, if you can imagine, if we have branches going off to the side like this, these are gonna provide uh, structure for whatever is hanging off the branches, be it leaves or flowers or fruit or whatever. All right, so stems provide structure and support, that's one of their uh, functions. And the second important function of stems is that they help transport water and food through the plant. So uh, in this, in all of these stems is gonna be a bunch of little tubes and piping and we've talked about uh, what type of plant has these piping and plumbing structures. If you wanna pause the video and maybe think about that real quick, but that would be a vascular plant, right? So vascular plants have these, uh, these plum this plumbing system basically with kind of like these pipes or you can think of them like veins in the human body that are able to transport water and food. So if it's a pipe that transports water, it's called xylem. And if it's a plant that transports, or a part that transports food, it's called the phloem. So the easiest way to remember this is that food has the F sound at the beginning, and phloem with the PH also has the F sound at the beginning. All right, so food in the phloem and water in the xylem are what's transported throughout the stems. All right, so stems provide a lot of this transport of water and food, and that's their second major function. Next part, leaves. So leaves have a couple of important functions, but their main important function is photosynthesis. So leaves are, are the part of the plant that have the most chloroplasts in the plant. All right? So we can imagine 
what color chloroplasts are, are going to make a plant? Well, they, they're green. They're going to they're be what causes that green color in many plants. So these chloroplasts in the leaves, they enable it to do photosynthesis. So if we think back to the, the structure of a plant cell, right, the chloroplasts are what enable photosynthesis because they absorb that sunlight and allow it to drive the photosynthesis reaction. So because the leaves have the most chloroplasts, they're going to be doing most of the photosynthesis for a plant. All right? Other plant cells and, and different parts of the plant will be doing photosynthesis to some extent, but the leaves, because they have the most chloroplasts, are going to be doing the most, the heavy lifting of, of photosynthesis for the plant. All right, so you can, I'm sure we've all seen different kinds of leaves before, right? In elementary school, maybe we looked at a bunch of different types of leaves. You can have kind of maple looking leaf like this or, or some kind of thinner, smaller leaves. Leaves can come in any shape and size or color really. And, uh, but the key is the leaves have the most chloroplasts, so they're gonna be really the key, uh, the key components for photosynthesis in a plant. All right, and our last plant part that we're going to talk about here, flowers. All right, so not all plants have flowers. There's a difference between flowering and, and non-flowering plants. But for plants that do have flowers, the main purpose of a flower is for reproduction. So what this means is basically plants making new plants, right, reproducing themselves. So the two important parts of a flower for reproduction, the pistil, the pistil is the female flower part. It contains the egg cells and the stamen. The stamen is the male flower part and it produces pollen which contains sperm cells. Alright, so the male flower part, the stamen, is what produces the pollen which contains the sperm cells and then the pistil has the egg cells. Alright, so how plants reproduce like this is the stamen here, which have two different parts, the anther and the filament. The stamen produces a bunch of pollen and some of, them, some of it ends up getting transported either by the wind, the wind could carry some of this pollen, or bees, other insects can kind of drop onto the flower here, get some of the pollen rubbed off on them, and then go to a different flower and rub the pollen off on that flower. And so pollen can be transported in two main ways, uh, by animals or by the wind. All right, so this pollen gets produced by the stamen, and then in order for a plant to reproduce, that pollen, which contains the sperm cells, needs to come into contact with an egg cell, and the egg cells are held down here inside of the pistil. All right, so there's a, a few important parts of the pistil and stamen that we'll talk about, but basically the stamen produces the pollen, which has the sperm cells, and the, the pollen has to eventually come into contact with an egg cell inside of the pistil if the plant wants to reproduce. So we talked about how uh, we can make new seeds for plants, right? So if we have the pollen coming into contact with an egg cell, it will fertilize that egg cell, and then that will make a uh, potentially a new seed and a new plant. Right? So the stamen and the pistil, they have a few parts here uh, that you need to know. The anther is kind of this top part of the uh, stamen here, and that's what actually releases the pollen. And then this kind of wiry part of the stamen here, that's called the filament. And uh, the, you can have more than one stamen in a flower. If you can kind of look at this picture here, we've got four stamen on this flower here. And the stamen contain these two parts, the anther and the filament. And for the pistil, it has a bunch of different parts here. So the top of the pistil is called the stigma. All right, so that's, that's the part that's gonna have this, it has this little opening that will accept the pollen and uh, allow the sperm cell to kind of travel down through the pistil towards the egg cells here because, again, the sperm cells from the pollen need to come into contact with the egg cells in order to fertilize the egg. Uh, this little tube-like structure in the pistil, that's called the style, and then we have at the bottom where the egg cell is actually held, these are, these are called the ovaries. All right, so again, humans have ovaries as well. They contain the egg cells, so it's the same with flowers. Flowers have ovaries, that's where the egg cells, or ovules, which is another name for egg cells, are contained. All right, so we need to know these different parts within the pistil and the stamen. So the pistil has these four main parts, really, really the three main parts here, and then it contains ovules or eggs on the inside. And then the stamen has these two main parts, the anther and the filament. All right, and a couple of other uh, plant parts. I mean, you've, uh, we've all obviously heard of petals before. Those are just these, uh, these kind of uh, little leafy looking, I mean they're not leaves, but they, uh, they look kind of a little bit like colored leaves almost. Uh, uh, we, I'm assuming we all know what flower petals are. 
Uh, down at the bottom here, we have the sepals. So the sepals, if you've ever seen a flower like this before, it has often these, these kind of green little uh, leafy looking things at the bottom. And what those uh, do is kind of provide a little support for the, uh, the petals of the flower there. And then right below here, we have the receptacle. The receptacle is this kind of nub at the bottom in between the stem and the flower that provides support and holds it holds it up as well. So the sepal and rece receptacle are both providing support for the flower. They have a few other functions as well, but mostly we just need to know that they're providing support for the uh, heavier flower head up here. All right, thanks for watching this video on plant structures, and I'll see you in the next one.